Well, hello, everybody. We hope you're having a wonderful day. It's Stan Morris on NEA Report as we're starting you out with a look at your new Wave Wireless forecast, home of the $49 iPhone screen repair. It's a mostly clear night on the way tonight with a low around 68 degrees. For your Saturday, expect to see a high around 88. Should feel pretty good outside. Uh, partly sunny skies as it set, uh, stands right now. For Sunday, a slight chance of showers and thunderstorms may even pop up in the afternoon. Mostly cloudy otherwise and a high around 86. Those showers and thunderstorms are expected Sunday night and into Monday as well as Tuesday. You're going to see those highs around the mid 80s though, so it should feel pretty good. At least as we start out the week next week, by the time we get into the later part of the week, the highs are going to be going back up. It's around 87 degrees right now in Jonesboro. We're glad to have you in on NEA Report. We're set to cover a very special issue today, the Randolph County wet-dry debate. Or more specifically, if Randolph County is going to get to vote on the wet-dry debate, we begin our coverage right now. Thanks for joining us on NEA Report. It is Friday and we're glad to have you in with us as we're getting set to do a special report to talk about something that's coming up on Monday. And that's probably going to be in the news a little bit past Monday too. Uh, we're looking ahead to the signature turn-in that's going to take place in Randolph County by the group called Let Randolph County Vote. They're looking to get the issue on the ballot in November of wet or dry county. And it's a difficult process for them because they have gone through it already, at least many of them as individuals, not as a group, um, a couple of times. This time, however, they're focused just on letting the residents have a voice at the polls. The problem is with the signature process for a wet and dry vote, you have to have an astonishing 38% of signatures of registered voters in the county. More people have to sign the petition than actually have to vote for it to pass if it were to get on the ballot. It's almost crazy to say, and yet that is the way that the law works in Arkansas for alcohol-related issues. We're joined on the phone to talk about this issue more with George Jarrett, a veteran journalist from Northeast Arkansas who's also an author of The Creekside Bones and Witches in West Memphis, uh, two books uh, detailing a lot of crime and other issues in Northeast Arkansas that you probably heard and read a lot about in the news. That's George has written as well. He's also a reporter for Talk Business and Politics, and I think he's got a dog too. George, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Stan? I'm excellent. Thank you, sir. Uh, this is an issue, of course, the Let Randolph County vote, turning in their signatures on Monday, something you and I both covered. You actually had the first story online uh, this week uh, about it at talkbusiness.net. It's been a long road for them, though, on this. It didn't start this year, did it? No, actually it started in 2014. Um, they, uh, it was kind of in 2014, it, there wasn't a real concerted effort, but there was an effort to try to get it on the ballot. And then in 2016, um, they they thought they had enough signatures, um, and through you know like an invalidation process, you know they came up a little bit short. You know the clerk's office didn't uh, validate some of the petitions. You know they have a whole they have a myriad of reasons why they can strike. Um, a, a, a petition and one you know and I, I had to actually talk to them you know about uh, some, some of the people who were organizing the effort to get it on the ballot in 2016 you know I told them you know that they needed to talk to the people in Sharp County um, because they knew all the ins and outs of this whole process and so through through that communication um, you know uh, just as a for instance if you have let's say 10 signatures on a sheet um, if one of the signatures is struck, then all ten actually are taken off. So, um, as laborious as it is, you know, if you're going to if you're going to try to do something like this, you need to have one signature, one sheet, so then you don't lose the other nine or twenty or whatever it is that you had on there to begin with. So they finally refined that process. Um, it looks like they've got a legitimate number of registered voters to sign the petition. So if um, now the next phase will come after they turn in the signatures. Um, they will um, more than likely there will be some legal challenge mounted. A lot of uh, 
churches and liquor stores in adjacent counties and actually in Missouri, it's almost certain that, that they will try to uh, put forth some effort to stop them in court from being able to vote on this. That is, of course, who's funding the major portion of the uh, opposition group, which is Keep Randolph County Safe. Um, and we'll talk about that name here in just a second, too. Uh, but it's uh, outside liquor stores uh, are the only donors that I have seen on the Secretary of State's filing list as far as those who are, are funding it. I'm not sure if the updated numbers show others, uh, but it was also run. Uh, um, I think the chairperson of that group was the um, uh, gentleman, uh, uh, Anderson, and I'm, I'm, his first name escapes me at the moment, so forgive me. Uh, but somebody will associate that with a, a local HVAC uh, business because it's, it's the same um, individual. So uh, the issue clearly, though, it's one that goes back, it goes back for several years. Um, amidst all of this, there's a restaurant, like I think in between the last time this happened and now, the last two years, a restaurant... Um, uh, Bella Piazza, I believe, is uh, has opened downtown in uh, Pocahontas. That, of course, does serve uh, some drinks. Um, that, that, which is, and I bring up just to say that's a new, um, a new element, you know, to Pocahontas, and that's something that's that we've not seen there before. Um, certainly, the times are changing. But if if this goes through and this passes, I mean. Even then, I think there's there's a limit, right, on how many stores can even open, and it's a it's a pretty low limit, I want to say, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think with uh, uh, Randolph County, the last time I checked, they have a population of seventeen thousand, and the ABC board will typically issue um, like a, a a license to sell liquor, like in a liquor store, per five thousand people. So that would mean that Randolph County, as of right now, would be in line for possibly three liquor permits. And then the beer and wine, um, they can be sold in, you know, like convenience stores, grocery stores, stuff like that. But they also, but those businesses have to go through an application process with the ABC. And it's not, it's not definitive that they'll get it. A lot of them do. I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, if they apply, you know, they don't, the owner doesn't have any criminal background or any compelling reason why they should be able to sell those uh, wine or beer than they usually get them. So, um but yeah, no, it's not. You're not gonna. There's not gonna be liquor stores on every corner there for sure. Now, the opposition group is called Keep Randolph County Safe, and there's been a lot of different statistics that have been put out there um, about this. And uh, as, as as far as your research goes, um, is a wet county more dangerous? Um, I had done some research several years ago. I had covered, you know, back in 2000. Um, in the mid 2000s, there was a there was a push in Sharp County mm-hmm. um, to to go wet, and so I, I did some research back then. And um, you know, it, it, it and this was a I believe it was the University of Arkansas did a um, had a study that showed that uh, dry counties were actually more um, dangerous than wet counties when it come, when it came to drinking and driving. Um, they never they didn't really come up with an answer or reason to it. And I, I talked to several people. And, you know, like a law enforcement, you know, other types of people who had some expertise in that area, and a lot of them thought that one of the one of the factors would probably be the fact that if you're driving to go buy alcohol somewhere, you know, if you're in a car, you know, people, you know, it's just human nature they start drinking on the way back from the liquor store. You know, if it's just up the street, you know, you, you don't drive as far. You get home, you're not drunk. Well, if you have to drive 20 minutes and then you start drinking in your car. Um, you know, there's a more likelihood that you're going to get into some type of alcohol-related, you know, accident or something like that. So that's the study that I saw. I don't know that I've, I've seen a recent study about this. That mm-hmm. was probably four or five years ago. Um, but as far as I know, that's a pretty legitimate, you know, it's a legitimate study. Well, when I was going through earlier today, and I linked one of them in the story at NEAReport.com, I also uh, wrote something about this one today um, in preparation for Monday. Uh, there was a, a similar study. There were two similar studies. One I had seen that was in Texas, and I, another one that I, I want to say was in Oklahoma, but I, I, I struggle at the moment with, with but the link is in the story. So nonetheless, um, other stories have also showed um, this similarly. And, and from a bit of personal perspective, I would also want to offer this, um, and I've told some people this before, I, I go out and pick up a lot of litter, in Jonesboro and, and Northeast Arkansas, sometimes, and um, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll take my you know pickup truck and go fill it full, and then um, 
come back home and sort it for recycling if I can and put the rest in the dumpster. Well, the soda can variety are not, and, I, and that's actually already an incorrect statement. They actually are, the aluminum cans um, are 90% beer cans in Craighead County. And so maybe 95%. I mean, it's very high. It would shock you for a dry county how it's bush beer up and down. And, I mean, that's like the most popular beer apparently around here is, is bush, bush beer. Um, and so I, I began noticing that when I was doing this, this kind of, you know, uh, work around the community. And it just kind of made me wonder, why, I mean, why? And, and, and then you think about it. Well, you can't have... Beer cans said, you know, if you finish your beer while you're driving, uh, you're going to, what? You're not going to keep it in the, the seat. You're certainly, you know, because if you get pulled over, that's that's evidence against you. So people toss it out and, um, you know, that's the end of it. So at the minimum, I know for a fact we're seeing a lot of drinking and driving in the county that we're currently in. I can't necessarily attribute that to it being a dry county indirectly or directly, but the fact that the statistics have shown that dry counties do have a larger occurrence of drinking and driving incidences, I think it's worth noting that going wet doesn't seem to have an effect on that, at least in every study that I've been able to locate it, what seems like that you also have, have uh, observed just based on what we just talked about there. Yeah, and it would be it would it would probably be hard to quantify that just mm -hmm. yet because we've had several counties. We had Sharp County, and I'm just trying to think off the top of my head. I, I believe um, I think Marion County over in uh, North Central Arkansas went wet several years ago. So it probably would take some time to generate good data. Mm -hmm. um, and, and both of these counties are very rural too, so it's not it's not like they have the resources to generate a, a study like this. But um, maybe one of the universities could do this sometime and, and figure out if, if, tur if turning a county wet um, increases or decreases in instances of, you know, wrecks that are, are tied to, you know, drinking and driving. I want to show this to you. It's an interesting statistic I found in... In, uh, incidentally enough, the Washington Post, one of our, our favorite outlets here, um, it says that less booze, more meth is the uh, title of this, um, George. And I just want to want you to visualize this with us while you're on the phone with us here because um, meth lab seizures per 100,000 in wet counties were listed just slightly above 2.0. In moist counties, a word that's probably going to get a lot of angry faces in chat, um, it's around 2.3 to 2.4, right? But what's stunning is dry counties, meth lab seizures per 100,000 people are listed at almost 4.0, right under it, about 3.9. In other words, just about double. And the numbers don't end there. Under all meth-related incidences per 100,000, Wet counties score just above 40. Moist counties actually score around right under 60. It's about 55 is what it looks like. But counties that have no alcohol, it's above 80. Again, almost double what a wet county is. So, in other words, the numbers for meth usage appear to double in counties where you can't go buy a beer. Uh, that's interesting. And I have not seen those numbers before today. So I'm still processing my reaction to that. Um, I'm, I, I'm not asking you for, you know, a big opinion or anything like that. But when you look at that on the surface, I am curious what you think. Uh, that's a pretty stunning statistic. I mean, there's a lot of factors. Um, and, and I'd have to see like the research that they did to come up with that number. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, one thing that you got to remember too about uh, a lot of dry counties, even in the state of Arkansas, dry counties tend to be more rural counties, and so there may be a component of making mess where there is a component where it's just because it's a rural county, you know, people want to do that stuff in secret. They don't want to, you know, um, and, and, and methamphetamine tends to be a more rural problem than an urban problem in Arkansas. Uh, but, I mean, that being said, that can't account for all of that difference for sure. 
No, and it, I mean, I think it just stands to reason. Of course, there's there's other factors you have to consider in there too, I'm sure. But also, I mean, at the same time, what is the, what the, my common sense says, well, if you don't have a thing to do in your county, uh, then, then if it's just, uh, you know, the consequences aren't that much different. I mean, there are felony differences, I guess there. Um, but if it's still breaking the law, people say to themselves, I'm going to go to jail anyway, whatever. I'll go get screwed up on this. There's, I mean, and what's sad is actually there probably is an easier access to find crystal meth in, uh, Randolph County than there is to find beer for sale right now. You know, and it sounds crazy, but the availability, you know, what's the best ability in the world is availability. And, you know, when you have products out there that people used to get inebriated, um, you know, and it could very well be a case where, you know, meth or, or you know, other drugs are, are just available. Mm-hmm. And, you know, having to drive, you know, 20, 30 minutes to, to get alcohol and drive back, I mean, that might be an issue for a lot of these folks. And, I mean, I, you can't say that it's not a factor. I mean, they definitely probably need to study that. Oh, I bet you can drive five minutes uh, just about anywhere you're at in Randolph County to go buy some meth right now. Um, and, uh, you know, you're driving half an hour to go buy um, uh, some booze. And, I mean, that's not legitimately uh, per se exact. Obviously, there's some variables in what I'm saying there. But um, the essence of what I mean is it's an easier thing for you to access illegal drugs than, than it would be to, to access illegal alcohol because there's no money in illegal alcohol, so nobody takes the chance to do that. Um, there's just a huge risk. That's all that there really exists there because there's no true buyer, right? So the point well, is... There's no, there's no profit component to it. I mean, yes. And I mean, he, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's totally true. All we're, and, and all I'm trying to do, too, is, is trying to make sense of a statistic that just kind of, you know, knocked me uh, uh, for a loop earlier because it's just a bit, it, it's a bit stunning, just like you and I have, have kind of both said. Next step, of course, comes Monday uh, as uh, all the signatures have to be submitted and the hope is among the Let Randolph County Vote group and Linda Bolin, the chairperson of that group, that they will have enough. As of today, I think as of both of our stories, they have about 300 signatures more than the requirement, um, but it all comes down to if they get enough certified for uh for the process, and, and that's a big number to meet, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit, around 3,800. Um, they right now have got around 4,100. They hope to get probably anywhere from, you know, 60 to 100 more signature, legit signatures this weekend. Um, so they want to be, you know, they want to be several hundred ahead of where they need to be just in case some do get struck and some inevitably will get struck. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, they think that they're, they've got enough of a cushion now. Um, plus they'll have a, a 10 day cure period if any are struck, you know, to, to rectify whatever the issue is. I mean, sometimes it's as minor as the first, the signer not putting the correct date when they signed it, you right. know, um, they can strike it just for something simple like that. So that, that'll be the next step of the process. Um, if, and when they are certified by the clerk after that. That's when, if there's any legal challenges mounted, and let's let's be clear, you know, um, you know, the churches and the liquor stores, they do have motivations here. The churches obviously think it's an immoral issue, mm-hmm. um, and then the liquor stores is a profit issue. I mean, they, you know, they don't want to lose business, they don't lose their customers, so they'll do whatever they can, whatever they legally can do to try to stop that. And there's a whole, you know, it's funny, especially on an issue like this, they'll be, uh, you know, and I can't even. I couldn't even predict what type of lawsuit could possibly be brought because, I, you know, they just come up with so many different um, facets. I remember in 2008, you know, over Sharp County, they thought they had it was a game set match. And um, they, the clerk over there had struck just enough signatures for it not to appear on the ballot. And, of course, they went to court, and a judge, actually Judge Phil Smith, who's actually from Pocahontas, mm. he ultimately decided in that case that the uh, clerk had was correct in striking those, and so he had, or, or he allowed it to happen. And I, I, I was pretty surprised. You know, I, I was in the courtroom for three days for that one. Um, it seemed like the reason they were being I mean, they literally would put people on the stand who had, um, who had signed the petition, and then their signature had been struck for some reason, 
And so, you know, when they got on the stand and said, hey, I really want my signature on here, you know, at that point I thought, okay, well, obviously the judge will, you know, rule in their favor, but he didn't. And so it wasn't even until 2012 that they were able to get it on the ballot and get it passed. So they can come up with anything and everything in a courtroom. You know, Circuit Judge Phil Smith, have you heard about this deal where uh, he allegedly got assaulted at the grocery store? Uh, yeah, yeah, I actually, um, I, I've kept up with it closely, but I did hear that, yes. Um, I have uh, requested, I'm supposed to be getting the video to that soon, and hopefully I'll be able to publish that on NEA Report in the coming days. Um, I just thought I'd share that with you and with our audience here that stayed with us that long. Um, you know, there's some questions about that I'd like to have uh, answered because it's a curious, it's a curious incident. Um, I will tell you that the person that is being uh, accused of attacking him, I've, I have spoken with uh, the accused, whose who's name Randy Bird, and uh, he claims that uh, the judge rammed into him. Uh, so oh, I, wow. yeah, I, I want to, you know, and he's represented, I believe by Bill Stanley of Jonesboro. Um, I want to see more about this and, and, you know, um, see what happened. It's going to be interesting back to this though. Um, this specific case we're talking about today, the Randolph County issue, you did mention something that, that jogged my memory a bit about the last time this all come about. You mentioned about the signatures being struck. Um, and, and you were describing the Sharp County 2008 uh, situation, but that's precisely what happened last time in Randolph County. Make no mistake about it. Uh, uh, here comes Stan Morris right now. This is this is called uh, my me talking. Don't necessarily attribute this to George if somebody gets mad listening. But what I'm saying is that uh, um, there was a requirement. They turned in 6,000 uh, signatures, and of course they ended up falling a couple of hundred short by the time Rhonda Blevins got done striking them all off, and her staff too. I did special reporting, which I even linked to today, that detailed some of the members of the staff at that time uh, were posting on Facebook the music that they were listening to while they were, they said, checking petition signatures. Also, uh, we showed at least one example of one of the signatures that had been struck. It was almost virtually identical, and it was struck for being a bad signature. Um, clearly, it had been signed in a faster way than the, the driver's license example that it was compared to had been, just as you would expect to be done by somebody signing a petition they hand you in person versus setting down to sign something um, at the DMV. Um, so all of that in, in <clears throat> now on, on, on the record, um, a lot of that uh, that was... Uh, that took place last time uh, is now hoped not to happen again. But also, a lot of the signatures that were struck, were, um, I believe, took place uh, because of uh, an outside canvasser um, or, or something to, to that effect um, was, was used. And my understanding in my conversations with Linda Bolin are that they have been meticulous about avoiding those pitfalls uh, uh, again this time. And of course, as you and I know, Linda is no stranger to law, is she? Not at all. No, very sharp. Linda is very, very sharp. She's an attorney in, uh, of course, Pocahontas and Randolph County. Uh, I'm not sure if she currently practices, but I, I know that she, I believe she does. She probably does still. Um, but she, um, I, I want to say she's retired, but I think she does do a little bit of legal work. I know she worked on this for, uh, you know, she was in the courtroom, you know, like you, you talked about this being in court back in 16 in Randolph County. Mm -hmm. I know she was up there with the attorneys who were working on this for, for the organization at the time that was trying to get these signatures on the ballot or get this thing to the ballot. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 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 Linda, very, very sharp. Very sharp woman. Um, and uh, a lot of very sharp people and good people working on this. I know too. Um, as far as you know, what people decide to vote, I mean, that's up to them, um, and it's up to the people. If I guess if they're even going to get to vote uh, ultimately, although it would appear like that that would be the will of the people, just based on the uh, overwhelming numbers that we've seen turned in now. Now, I guess twice as of uh, a couple of days in the future. Um, so, uh, all of that being the case, uh, let me just let me put you in the hot seat and ask you the big question. Do you think it's going to be able to make it on the ballot this time? I, just because I, I just because I know how meticulous Linda is, I, if I had to bet money, I would probably lean towards it's going to somehow make it onto the ballot. Hmm. Um, I think at some point, you know, the best argument, you know, I told uh, Ruth Reynolds in, in Sharp County years ago, 
um, you know, when she was trying to get it on the ballot over there, you know, um, the best argument for any of these ballot initiatives is, and I'm not just talking about alcohol, I'm talking about ballot initiatives in general, the best the best argument is people have a right to vote on these issues. You have a right to vote. And if that is an inarguable, for anybody, for any red-blooded American, that's an inarguable position. If you don't want alcohol sales in Randolph County, show up in November and vote it down. You know, if you want alcohol sales in Randolph County, show up and vote it in. I mean, that's all you got to do. And you know, let let yeah. you know let the let your argument for or against let that be your guide. Indeed. Well, you know, and and it's important to note one final note: the signature requirement for. A wet dry issue is not the same as any other issue. It is an exorbitant almost one third of the the voters in the county. I want to say have to just sign the petition. Thirty eight percent of registered voters oh, wow. have to sign. The I, I, I said a high number, and I was it was wrong. It was even higher. Is that not crazy? It's a thirty eight percent of the registered. Thirty eight percent. If that many people show up and vote for it, it passes overwhelmingly because you don't have that many people that ever vote in the election usually. <laughs> In 2016, 5,000 people voted in, in Randolph County, period. In the general election, it was a presidential election year. That's, so that's going to be your high turnout year, you know, is, is that year. And just for this petition, the, they, they collected over 4,100 signatures. And I'm going to bet that overwhelmingly, and I'm talking like 95 to 99% of the people who signed the petition, if they show up at the ballot box, in November, and it's on. They're going to vote to turn that county wet. So, you, and when I say five thousand people voted, that's total. So, like, just as a for instance, let's say you had a a, 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 a graphic where a person who voted, let's say, for Donald Trump, had a have a tendency to vote against alcohol sales, whereas somebody who voted for Hillary Clinton had a tendency to vote for alcohol sales. Well, I don't know how the the presidential breakdown was, but it was you know, you know. 2, 000, maybe 3,000 votes to 2,000 votes. So when you look at this number, you know, you're looking at 4,100 people who are already probably going to show up and vote for this thing. So in a county, Randolph County side, that is an overwhelming advantage statistically. There is a major, major problem whenever more people have to sign the petition than have to actually vote for it for the chance for it to pass. That's a problem. Because it's supposed to be the other way. It's supposed to be a smaller sampling gives the larger sampling the ability to choose. Not everybody has to decide to give 10% of people the ability to choose, which is the way that it is with alcohol issues now. Uh, in Arkansas, yeah. at least, for some reason. But that's, uh, I guess that's the way the uh, alcoholic cookie crumbles. Um, George, with that horrible pun now on the record for the rest of my life, I appreciate you for joining us. And uh, thank you so much. And I would suggest people check out your uh, new article on this at talkbusiness.net. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for having me. Family Medical Clinic of Walnut Ridge and Bono are your neighborhood health care providers, and we're now accepting new patients. We know you have a tight schedule, so we're here six days a week at both locations from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Walk-ins are welcome. In Walnut Ridge, stop by 1045 West Main Street or call us to make an appointment, 886-8300. In Bono, we're on Highway 63 North or call 930-9990. Walnut Ridge Family Medical Clinic and Bono Family Medical Clinic, here for you when you need us. Haley Norris, Realtor. No. Should I make my hair go like this? Whether you need to buy, sell, or lease. Haley, can I use my hands? Or is yeah. that, where, where are my hands? Where do they go? Just Haley. Say, just say Haley. <laughs> Whether, <laughs> <laughs> you need my expertise. Haley Norris, Realtor. Or even do a commercial lease. Haley Norris, Realtor. Do, should I say Remax Real Estate Center or not? Is that too salesy? No, that's good. My average days on market, is just 50 days. You need my expertise. And that means I'm putting more money back in your pocket. Let's have one final look now at your weather forecast from New Wave Wireless, home of the $49 iPhone screen repair. You see, it's gonna be a clear night for us tonight. Tomorrow, a pretty nice day. 
Possibilities for showers and thunderstorms begin after tomorrow night. Specifically into Sunday, chances for showers, thunderstorm chances in the afternoon, and they're much more likely as you move into late Sunday and Monday and Tuesday as well. Thanks for joining us. A busy week on NEA Report. Back next week with more news, unless breaking news happens, and then we're going to just work all the time. Why not? <laughs>